So you just got your hands on your first ever Mac. And the first thing that happens is... Well, don't worry, because together with Jumbo, we'll explore Mac OS, step by step. We've got five levels to master, each harder than the previous. And through these levels, you will see that using a Mac is more straightforward than you ever would have thought. All right, let's start off with the basics, the six essential features that make up the Mac desktop. And... After exactly 90 seconds, you will be way past the newbie level. If you're coming from any other PC, you're used to each app having its own menu. On a Mac though, we've got one single menu bar that never leaves the top of the screen. Meaning as we switch from one app to another, the menu item also change to match the app we're in. But one menu item never change. And that's the Apple menu. Think of it as your system control base, from where you can shut down or restart your Mac, force quit buggy apps, or quickly open system settings. And you might already have realized that the menu bar is cut in two. So a quick look at the right shows us the battery level, the Wi-Fi connection, or the date and time. Now, there's more of this in the control center, where we can do things such as adjust the brightness and volume level, connect to headphones or change the sound output. The point being, for most quick settings, we don't need to actually open the settings app, we can change them right from the menu bar. And if you look behind the date and time, there's your notification center, with all your recent updates, plus space for your widgets, like the weather, your to-do list from reminders app, or upcoming events that you want to be reminded of. I personally don't use widgets, but you can very easily drag them just like in the video and use them for your own benefits. Now, the dock might look simple at first glance, but trust me, it can do a lot more than you probably realize. At its core, it's the place where you keep your most used apps, folders, and even documents for quick access. To start, if we open the launch pad, which shows every single app installed on your Mac, we can grab any of those apps and drag them straight into the dock. That way, they are always right there when you need them the most. And the same goes the other way around. If there's something you don't want sitting in the dock, just drag it out and it will disappear. By default, your dock already includes your download folder, but you can actually drag and drop any folder or document to that right hand side. And when you click on a document, it opens up immediately. But if you click on a folder, it will pop up right above the dock, showing what's inside. You can take it a step further by clicking on the folder and choosing how you want it to appear as a fan, grid, or list and even how it should be sorted. Another cool thing is that this part of the dock also works for organizing. You can literally drag a file and drop it onto a pinned folder to move it there. You'll also see the trash icon, which of course lets you delete files or even uninstall apps. And this whole drag and drop concept works across apps too. For example, you can drag a picture onto the photos app and import it. Or, you can also drop a PDF on the mail app to instantly attach it to a new mail. Alright, we've covered the basics of the macOS interface. Now it's time to level things up and bring in a bit of organized chaos. When you first start using a Mac, managing multiple windows can feel like one of the most confusing parts. But here's the thing. Window management is actually one of macOS biggest strengths once you get the hang of it. So let's take a step back and break it down piece by piece. This is usually where people get frustrated. Clicking the red button doesn't actually quit the app, it only closes the current window. The app itself stays running in the background so you can still open a new window from the menu bar. If you really want to quit the app, you can do that from the top menu by choosing quit. Now, if you don't want to quit the app, but just want it out of the way, click the yellow button to minimize it into the dock. You can also completely hide an app by choosing hide from the menu bar or pressing command H. 
and when you're ready to bring it back, just click the app icon in the dock. As for the green button, that one launches the app into full screen so you can really focus on what you're doing. This hides both the dock and the menu bar, but you can bring them back anytime by moving your cursor to the top or bottom of the screen. And to exit full screen, just hit the escape key and that's it. Now I know on Windows, that same green button doesn't mean full screen, it just maximizes the window. If you want that same kind of behavior on Mac, just hold Option and double click any corner of the window. At this point, you're probably thinking, alright, I get how to close, quit and minimize things. But, what about snapping windows and switching between them or seeing them all like on a taskbar? Well, don't worry, we're getting there. Alright, so let's go over six really useful multitasking tricks you can use on your Mac. First up, you know how on Windows you use Alt plus Tab to switch between apps? Well, on the Mac, that's Command plus Tab. Same idea, it shows all your open apps, so you can jump between them super quickly. And there's another way to do it. Just drag three fingers up your screen, and all your open apps and tabs will be shown. And if you ever want to see every single window that's open on your Mac, press the F3 key. That view is called Mission Control, and it's basically Apple's version of Task View on Windows. Now for true multitasking, if you hover over the green button in the corner of a window, you'll see an option to tile apps side by side. That puts them into full screen mode, hiding the dock and the menu bar so you can stay focused. But, if you just want to snap windows, like position them without going full screen, hover over that same green button and pick how you want them to be arranged. This is a nice and simple way to do it without going full screen. But if there's one thing I've learned as a long time Mac user is that everything's easier when you know how to use the Finder app. It's home to every single document on your Mac. So welcome to level 4 and let's master the Finder step by step. It starts with this. Each Mac is born with your very own custom folder split into stuff like pictures, downloads and applications. In any folder there are four simple options to view your files up in the toolbar. We can toggle between icon, list column and gallery view. You can also open as many finder windows as you like with command and n and then drag and drop stuff between them. When it comes to moving files, you can do that by copying a file and then instead of pasting it with Command and V, paste it with Option, Command and V. All that said, the Finder might still not feel quite as advanced as let's say the File Explorer on a Windows PC. That's because by default the Finder is oversimplified. Apple wants to make it as stripped down and easy to use as possible, which means on the flip side, there are a lot of hidden features we can and should enable. Like the tab bar which you can activate in the view menu. The point being, instead of opening hundreds of finder windows to move files around, we can just open a new tab, just like we can in any web browser, and then grab a file and drop it onto the first tab to move it there. And taking this one step further, also in the view menu we can enable the path bar. This is a no brainer, I mean on any Windows PC it's already enabled by default. Heading to the finder settings you can choose what folder the finder shows when opening a new window. By default that's your recently added files. Oh, and under the sidebar you can tidy up your favorites by unchecking the folders you don't want to see there for quick access. But here's the thing, the finder, window management and the dock and the menu bar are all more or less things you know from any other PC. So let's talk about the three features that make the Mac unique and might be completely new to you. Like the spotlight search, which lets us find any file, app or piece of information on your Mac. With just one single keyboard shortcut, command and space. I mean just for example you can use it to quickly open apps or if you would like to open documents 
or quickly toggle specific settings, you get the picture. You can basically find anything you need directly from the spotlight search. Now let's take a look at the Max trackpad. The Max trackpad can actually do way more than just clicking, scrolling and tapping. But first, make sure you turn on tap to click in settings since it's off by default. Trust me, it makes everything feel smoother. Now let's go over what the trackpad can do. If you swipe up with three fingers, you'll see all your open apps and windows. When you're using an app in full screen mode, you can swipe left or right with three fingers to move between your apps or back to your desktop. And if you pinch together with four or more fingers, you'll open the launch pad where you can see all your apps. Alright, now let's go over some of the most useful keyboard shortcuts you'll actually use day to day. Starting off with option plus command plus space which opens a new finder search window so you can quickly look for any file. And command plus i shows more info about a selected file. And pressing the space bar on a selected file opens it in quick look so you can preview it without opening the actual app. And command plus w closes any window. In your browser, hitting command plus 1, 2 or 3 and so on switches between your tabs. And hitting command plus C copies and hitting command plus V pastes your text. And to paste the text without formatting so it matches your current font and size, press shift plus command plus V. To take a screenshot of a part of the screen, use command plus shift plus 4. And if you want to take a screenshot of the entire screen, press command plus shift plus 3. If an app freezes, hit option plus command plus escape. It opens the force quit menu so you can close it. And that's it for this review. We've now learned the basics of macOS and in the next video we're gonna go over the new update macOS Tahoe 26. We're gonna go over what's changed, what stayed the same and if there's any new problems with macOS Tahoe 26.